Hello students. Today in this video I will explain you the poetic devices used by the poet in the poem A Tiger in the Zoo. First of all we will discuss the rhyme scheme of this poem. The rhyme scheme of this poem it is A B C B. The whole poem follows this rhyme scheme of A B C B. You can see the first stanza. He stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage on pads of velvet coit in his coit rays. Here you can see the last word of these four lines. Stripes. Now, cage. Now, stripes and cage, they don't rhyme. So, we will give A to stripes and B, the alphabet B to case. The third word is coit. Now, coit also doesn't match with the, the, these words, stripes and case in sound. So, it will get C and rays. So, K's and rays, they rhyme together. They have the similar sound. So, they will get B, B. So, A, B, C, B. This A, B, C, B pattern follows in all stanzas. Here also shadow, grass. Now, shadow A, grass B. Hole is C and grass and pass. They rhyme uh, similarly. So, it will be B, B. Again, A, B, C, B. Third stanza here also you can see here houses, K, edge. Houses, edge, then clause and village. Now, house is A, edge is B, clause is C, and village and edge. They rhyme with each other, so it will be B, B. Again, A, B, C, B. So, the whole poem is having the rhyme pattern, rhyme scheme of A, B, C, B. Now, in this poem, the poet has used various poetic devices and has uh, tried to give the expression uh, a very important, uh, very emphatic uh, uh, note, what we will say. The first device is personification. Now here, personification. In this poetic device, a human polity or human polities are given to a non-living or inanimate thing. That is treating non-human objects or things as human beings. Now here, tiger. Tiger has been referred as a person. And for the tiger, the uh, poet has used the pronoun he. He is talks. Here, then you see his vivid stripes. He should be lurking. He should be snarling. So, everywhere the poet has used the he for tiger. And this is an example of personification. Next uh, poetic device is enjambment. Now, in this uh, poetic device, the same sentence or the same expression, it continues, it uh, goes through the next line or lines and no punctuation mark is used. Here you can see in the first two lines of the first stanza, he stalks in his vivid stripes the few steps of his cage. Here you can find stripes and then this sentence, it continues in the next line, the few steps of his cage. And you can see here, no punctuation mark has been used by the poet. So, this is an example of enjambment. Here also in the third stanza you can find he should be snarling around houses at the jungle's edge. <coughs> now, after houses, no, this uh, line, he, it continues in the next line, then at the jungle's edge. Here you can find no punctuation mark. So, this is an example of enjambment. Okay. So, in the uh, poem you can find various examples of this poetic device. Next is consonance. Now, consonance is a poetic device in which the same consonant sound is repeated without a proper sequence. That is the sound, it may come in a word in the beginning or in the middle or at the end. So, many adjacent words, words that are closely placed in a given line and in those words, the same consonant sound it will not follow a regular pattern, means it may come in the beginning in one word, in the other word it may be in the middle or at the bottom, okay. Now here you can see here, this example, here you can find, he has stalks in his vivid stripes, okay. Now here you can see the S sound has been repeated, here, stalks, now here S, S, again here in this S, again here S, okay. So, this is an example of consonants. Now, here, uh, 
then the next uh, poetic device is assonant now i get uh, the next uh, uh, poet the poetic device assonance it uh, refer it is the, the it uh, denotes the prominence of a vowel sound throughout the sentence means in a given uh, line or given sentence a few words are having the same consonant uh, sorry same vowel sound and it is very prominent here you can see in this line he stalks in his vivid stripes here you can find the i sound i here you can find in n is i his here also i vivid i then in the stripes also so this see the use of the vowel i it is very prominent in this line so this is an example of assonance in the third is in the fourth stanza also you can find here the example of assonance that he is locked in a concrete cell here you can find the e sound it is very prominent in locked it is e concrete here also e and in cell also e so e sound is prominent in this line in the this line so this is an example of assonance the poet has used metaphor also in this poem here you can see the use of metaphor in the in the first stanza the third line on pairs of velvet quite now metaphor is a poetic device in which a similarity is drawn between two very different things indirectly they are not introduced with the help of the word as or like like simply so the similarity is indirect and we have to draw it out what's the similarity here you can see on parts of velvet quite here the paws of the tiger they have been compared with the fabric velvet now velvet is a very soft uh, very soft fabric it's very smooth very silky so the poet has compared that the paws of the tiger is uh, is as soft as velvet okay so this uh, similarity is drawn indirectly so it is an example of metaphor another important poetic device used by the poet is oxymoron here you can see in the first stanza here in the last line the fourth line in his quiet rays here you can find these two words quiet rays now here the adjective here it is quiet in oxymoron a, this is a figure of speech in which two contradictory two very opposite qualities or uh, two contradictory terms appear in conjunction so the adjective that is used is means totally opposed to its meaning now raise the literal meaning of the word raise is that is extremely angry okay and an anger this anger is always expressed its expression is violent it is never very quiet cool or calm so here the use of this adjective quiet this word quiet it is totally reversed totally op opposite to the traits of this word raise it so so the use of this adjective quiet with this word raise it uh, quiet doesn't uh, it doesn't add the real meaning to this word raise it is it denotes very opposite meaning and this is known as oxymoron so students i have just explained you all the important poetic devices that the poet has used in this poem and you can can find the so many examples whether it is assonance consonance or alliter alliteration uh, you can find them in this uh, uh, poem everywhere for example you can see alliteration that is the in repetition of the initial sound here you can see he should be snarling the see the use of the uh, consonant uh, s this sound s is repeated again okay and it is always in alliteration the, the sound is always comes in the beginning so this is alliteration then here also you can find alliteration here mm. his barring his white fangs he is cross so here he is the repetition of the sound h so students these are the uh, important poetic devices and uh, just let, uh, let me remind you 
one another uh, poetic device is also very important to note and that is imagery now imagery is that using words or expressions in such a way that they create an image in readers mind now the poet has very well used this poetic device see uh, throughout the poem the way he has described the more life of the tiger in a in a zoo in his uh, in the forest he has compared how he lives how he praise uh, animals how he uh, terrifies uh, terrorize the villagers uh, how he moves in the jungle everything so when you will go through these lines okay you can see the use of the action words by the poet they all create a very uh, clear image in your in your mind when you go through the poem so this is the beauty of this poem so these are the poetic devices i hope that all of you have understood it Thank you students